Welcome back to Horrifying Stories. Before anything else, we'd appreciate it if you can click the subscribe button. Your support will go a long way. Thank you and enjoy today's episode. 48-year-old adventurer, Aniela, was out mountain biking in Whiting Ranch Wilderness Park with her biking buddy. Anne was already in the last stretch of the Cactus Hill Trail, when suddenly there seemed to be a startled animal on her peripherals. In just a snap, the animal charged right at her. This is her horrifying story. Viewer discretion is advised. Growing up, Anne, along with her siblings were only allowed to watch the TV for a maximum of one hour. Her parents had always wanted them to go outside and have some fun. This house rule was what ignited her love for the great outdoors. Since then, Anne became the adventurer that she was. She loved taking risks. As in turned 19, she had herself enlisted in the Marine Corps as a hydraulics mechanic for helicopters. Although it was an unusual field for a woman, it was a job which she felt so passionately about. Having been stationed at a base in Southern California, she fell in love with the place, as it also fed and fueled her love for the great outdoors. One of her favorite outdoor activities was mountain biking. It was Thursday, the 9th of January 2004. Anne sent a text message to Debbie Nichols, her friend and biking buddy. She invited her to a quick 45-minute biking session, at one of their favorites, the Whiting Ranch Wilderness Park. As soon as Anne got off work, after dropping some groceries at home, she headed onto the park which was only a 10-minute drive away. Around 3.45 in the afternoon, Anne and Debbie were ready for a quick and fun-filled ride, at least that's what they thought. With Anne on the lead, they speeded down the narrow twisting trail called Cactus Hill. As in turned at a blind corner, she saw a man who had stopped upon seeing an abandoned bike right beside the trail. After slowing down a bit and asking if things were okay, the other biker told them he was just going to quickly look for the owner of the bike. Anne took it lightly, didn't think much about it and went on. She returned to pedaling faster, and not long after, she was headed for a twisty section that led down to a ravine. The trail's final descent was surrounded by thick bushes. Suddenly, from her peripheral view, she saw an animal with a reddish-brown fur move swiftly. Being very familiar with this trail, she thought she had just startled a deer, hiding behind the bushes. However, it barely even reached a minute that she was proved wrong when the animal, mistaken as a deer, charged right at her. The impact and its grip were so strong that she immediately realized this wasn't a harmless animal at all. It was a mountain lion. And, likened the impact to having felt as if a truck fell and landed on top of her. As they were now both on the ground, the lion grabbed her and started ripping her shoulders with its sharp claws. At that instant, she screamed for help. The lion grabbed her by the back of the neck, dragged her one or two feet back, released her then locked its jaws again over the left side of her head, near her ear. It was as if the lion was trying to shift her position and moving her body around until she was facing up. With its teeth biting over her ear, as it dragged her again, pulling her to another foot or so, and its left ear was ripped off. The next thing it clenched its teeth on was the left part of her face, its upper fangs pierced through her nose bridge and upper lip, while its lower fangs pierced through her left cheek, now, mountain lions are territorial by nature. Also called as cougars, this species is native to the Americas. They usually hunt at night, initially watching and observing its prey silently before it launches a sudden attack, then fatally bites its prey through suffocation. Deers are normally their prey, sometimes other smaller animals as well. In Anne's case, however, she became a very rare prey. Mountain lions are so strong that they can carry an animal that weighs more than itself. It can even run over half a mile and jump while carrying its prey. Anne definitely felt this extraordinary and overpowering strength, as it continued to devour her with its piercing teeth and sharp claws. Just when she believed this was her end, 
the thought of her husband James hit her. Instantly, it was as if her brain suddenly shifted to fight mode. Using the skills her martial artist husband taught her, she started to punch her predator in the face as strongly as she could, to put up a fight. However, the lion didn't budge at all. In less than a minute from its first attack, Debbie was now approaching the final descent, and immediately heard the screams of Anne. Hurriedly, she jumped off her bike and saw Anne being brutally attacked on the face by the mountain lion. At that instant, seeing her friend's condition, Debbie felt so much rage against the lion for attacking her. Without a single hesitation, she lifted her bike and threw it to the lion. The bike successfully landed on its intended target, but the target remained unbothered and continued on. With its teeth clenched onto Anne's face, the lion started to pull her down the ravine. Upon seeing this, Debbie's maternal instincts kicked in. Immediately, she grabbed Anne's calf and pulled her as hard as she could, so she wouldn't get dragged completely out of sight. Nevertheless, the lion's strength was nothing Debbie could ever imagine. The lion was slowly pulling both of them down the ravine, but Debbie was determined to fight, totally ignoring the risks that she's putting herself in. She did everything to slow the lion's progress, using her heels as a stopper to prevent them from getting completely pulled into the ravine. In the midst of all the chaos, Debbie kept reassuring Anne that she wasn't letting go of her. In her mind, she kept praying and asking God for strength as she continued to fight it out with the lion. But all eyes on its target, the lion was also determined to devour its prey. It started to go for the throat of Anne. By instinct, and tried to bring her chin as close to her shoulder as possible to prevent herself from getting choked. Something which she learned from martial arts training. However, before she could secure her neck, the ferocious predators had already clenched its teeth onto the front of her neck. At this point, she looked at her friend then everything went black. She had already blacked out. Debbie continued to hold on to Anne, and kept yelling for help, hoping someone could hear her frantic cries. Not long after, three bikers going through the trail heard Debbie and immediately stopped to help them. One called 911, while the other two, threw rocks at the lion non-stop, until one of the rocks hit the back of the lion's neck. It was only then that the lion retreated and ran behind the bushes. Despite the normally poor cell signal in the area, they were able to successfully connect to a 911 dispatcher. Meanwhile, Debbie rushed over to and to check on her. Gradually, she regained her consciousness and was surprised to know that she was still alive and breathing. She felt as though she was drowning, choking on her own blood. She could feel her left cheek flap open from the end of her eyebrow to her lower cheek, so she held onto it to prevent it from hanging down and being totally ripped off. The bikers then rushed next to her, helped pick her up and moved her back onto the trail. After a few minutes, paramedics came rushing down to Anne's aid. However, it was no time to drop their guards down. The helicopter pilot saw the hungry predator still silently watching them from behind the bushes. As soon as the paramedics were done with the initial medical aid for Anne, she was then carried using a stretcher and was boarded onto the helicopter. In no time, she was successfully airlifted to the nearby Mission Hospital. She sustained two severed facial nerves, 20 deep puncture wounds which were around 3 or 4 inches deep, and a left cheek flapped open. What was miraculously astounding, however, was that none of the cuts from its sharp claws reached her trachea, esophagus, and carotid artery. And surgery lasted for six and a half hours, with over 200 stitches and staples that held her face together. After eight days, amazingly, she got discharged from the hospital and continued her journey towards recovery at home. She went on to receive six more reconstructive surgeries, performed by the generous Dr. Christopher Nolan at zero cost. Apparently, and wasn't the only victim of the mountain lion that tragic day. As their helicopter airlifted Anne, they saw from above a dead man's body on the ground. It was 35-year-old Mark Reynolds, the owner of the abandoned bike they had seen on the side of the trail. Because of this, having had two attacks in a single day, the California Department of Fish and Game hunted down and killed the ruthless predator. To this day, and is close to Mark's family and actively participates in the Mark Reynolds Memorial Fund, 
that gives out bikes to the underprivileged children and advocates for biking safety. And is also now an author of the book entitled Skin Deep, which seeks to inspire people to press on with life no matter what. Months after the attack, and went back to biking and even gathered her friends to go on a ride at Cactus Hill, the very same trail where the horrifying encounter happened. To her, the attack nor her reconstructed face will never define who she is. She and her husband James now have a daughter named Elsa, whom they even intentionally named after a lioness in the story Born Free. Thank you for making it this far. If you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel. We would greatly appreciate your support. For any story suggestions, drop a comment down below and we'll do our best to cover that as well. Again, thank you, and we'll see you on the next one.